changes. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome in to the channel. We're about halfway through July. So I wanna make sure you guys, uh, especially you newer sellers, are maximizing the profits on each and every eBay sale and throughout your eBay store if you are an active eBay seller. Here's five quick ways that you can do it. So number one is obvious, having the correct store level. This comes up in so many Facebook groups and posts and Instagram where people don't realize the cutoffs for the store level. So those of you that don't have a store, eBay gives you a certain amount of free listings. Once you go over those free listings, you start getting charged an insertion fee. I believe, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, is it 30 cents per insertion over your free amount? It could be 35 cents, I think it's 30 though. So you need to total that. The first eBay store level is the starter store, which if you agree to a yearly um, subscription is like five bucks, uh, a year or five bucks a month, excuse me. And so if you're paying 30 cents an insertion, we already know that it's not gonna take long to get to that $5, right? So uh, what, 20 of them is $6? So you only get like, what, like 15, 16, 16 or 17 um, insertions before you're already up to $5, 16 or 17 over your free allotment. Uh, the starter store is going to give you 100 free. So just keep that in mind and do the math to know that you need the right store level. Same for going from a starter to a basic. A basic is going to give you 250, and with the year subscription, I think it's like 23 or $24. And so you need to know that when you go over your starter store and you're paying that extra insertion fee. Now, when you go from basic to premium, if you go over your 250, it's I think 20 cents, and the premium uh, store is $60 a month. So it's like an extra 30, eight, $39, 37, 38, something like that extra. And so you just divide that out by the 20 cents and you figure out how many listings to go over. I've done the math, I don't have it in front of me right now, but that's how you decide if you're spending too much on the overage in the insertion fee and that you should bump your store up. Also remember when you go from a basic to, or from a basic to a premium, you get 25 extra dollars in shipping supply coupons. So if you're already spending that money on supplies anyways, you're immediately going to save $25. It's like your $60 premium drops down to 35. Or if you're using a basic, you get a $25 coupon and you're saving $25, which is the entire cost of the store. So things to keep in mind, having the right store level. I see people who spend way too much money on insertion fees and final value fees because they don't have a store or the right store. It also allows you to run sales and do other things that can cause your store to have more additional revenue and sold items, and that will increase enough to offset the cost of that store uh, fee also. So number one, having the correct store on eBay, the correct level, and paying the right fees. Number two is with your shipping. This is a huge mistake I see a ton of people making. This is every day, and it's two sides of shipping. Number one is your shipping supplies. So those of you that are experienced, a lot of us use the free USPS shipping supplies because we ship a lot of padded flat rates. We ship some small or medium flat rates or large flat rates. We use regional occasionally. Those are all free materials we don't have to pay for as long as we are paying for that shipping. There are a lot of us that do first class. We buy our own poly mailers, our own um, bubble mailers. We buy our own rolls of bubble wrap and this is something that the cost can add up. And so there's two ways to save money on your shipping supplies. One is obviously shop around. Use your free coupons from eBay, but once you run out of your free coupons, if you need more, you need to price match. There's three really good sites that you can price match. Obviously eBay and Amazon e-commerce is one place. Uline is another place, U-L-I-N-E, Uline. And then Quill, Q-U-I-L-L, -L, Quill, Uline, and uh, eBay, Amazon, you can also look at Office Depot or Staples, you can compare all of these. Yeah, it takes a few minutes to do some research and find what they have, compare sizes and prices and quantities, but get the best price. Also, if you're in a position to be able to pre-order, like let's say you use um, 200 poly mailers a month and there is an option, instead of buying 200 at a time once a month, where you can buy a thousand of them, five months worth, and the price drops by 20 or 30 percent, then you can easily stock up on all your material and you could save yourself hundreds of dollars a year 
just by pre-ordering and having enough in stock. That also makes sure that you never run out because if you're ordering exactly what you need month by month, the wasted time and money, definitely something to think about. So being able to pre-order those supplies and get them the cheapest is definitely crucial. Now, the second part of shipping is getting the correct shipping method. So I see a ton of people who are shipping things that could go first class as priority, that they really should just ship them first class and set that as their setting and their listing for first class. They're setting customers to priority on items that don't have to be priority. Now it's good customer service, but what I do is I list a shirt or let's say a remote control as first class and then I give the buyer an option to pay to upgrade this to priority. And so that's something you should do. Don't pay for unnecessary shipping. I see people shipping heavy boxes, USPS priority, uh, because they labeled it that way when they could have labeled it as UPS ground or FedEx smart post and offered the customer that service and saved money as well. So keep these in mind. The right shipping service is key. Also, if you're doing like a flat rate versus a padded flat rate versus a buy weight priority, make sure you're using the correct priority mail system. If it fits in a flat rate for $13 and by weight it's $18, use the flat rate. But if on the vice versa, it fits in a flat rate for $13, but it can go by weight for $11, then take it by weight in a non-flat box. So always make sure you're using the best shipping method, but always, always fulfill the shipping method that you offered the customer. So what you have to learn how to do is figure out when you're selling an item, what way it's gonna go and offer that to the customer so that you can ship it correctly. I know a lot of people do calculated. Honestly, I don't think it's the best option, but up to you. Okay, so that's number two is the shipping. Number three for our five ways to profit the most off of your eBay store is pricing. It's pretty obvious, right? Make sure you price items correctly. Don't just guess. You don't know how many times I've just guessed at a Tommy Bahama shirt and didn't even think like, wow, this one has a giant parrot on the back. I could have got 45 instead of 35. Um, I did it the other day with a Montgomery Gentry concert t-shirt, country uh, musician duo. Uh, I totally forgot that last year, Troy Gentry, uh, one half of Montgomery Gentry, it's John Michael Montgomery and Troy Gentry. Anyways, he was killed in a helicopter crash in New Jersey um, early last year, I believe. Uh, I totally forgot about it. And when people pass away, I know there's a lot of harsh feelings about this. Um, it's been like nine months or a year or something. I don't know how long it's been, a, a while. Um, their merchandise goes up in value. Now he, he's no Michael Jackson and he's no, uh, you know, uh, Nipsey or whatever that prices soared, but it did help the value of their shirts. And so I actually looked up the shirt that we had and I figured it was like a $15, $20 shirt. It turns out it was like 30, 40. Sure enough, I posted it and I started getting offers. It also makes stuff sell faster. So number three is always make sure your pricing is right. Don't guess, look it up, look on sellhound.com, look at Terapeak, look at the solds on eBay, go price check it against Poshmark. There's tons of ways to look up and get an idea of what stuff is worth. And you never wanna guess because if you guess, every time I guess, I'm wrong. I'm either underpricing, overpricing, just messing it up miserably. So always, always price your items correctly and look them up and double check them. If you're confident, do it. But otherwise, double, triple, quadruple check. Okay, number four is going to be targeting those of you that use promoted listings, which is most of us, I think. Always make sure that your promoted listings are on the correct percentage. So eBay has this bad habit if you go into your promoted and you change that percentage to all the same. Sometimes I open it up and I set it to like, let's say 2% across the store, and it ends up being set to 7%. It's super weird, it's a glitch, it's happened for as long as we know. A lot of us have experienced it, and it eBay has admitted that it's been a problem. So. Uh, always check. I tend to check it like once a day. It's like a five second task. I just open my promoted and make sure they're where they want to be. Uh, I have like two to three promoted because you can do 500 per um, promoted listing campaign. So, you know, that one store has like 1100 in it. My other store is like four or 500. So um, always make sure those percentages are right. Otherwise you could be paying seven and 8% on promoted as opposed to 2% where you wanted to be giving away an extra 6% of sales. Uh, you know, if you're selling four or $5,000 a month, it could amount to hundreds of dollars a year or even thousands of dollars a year, depending on what happens. So always, always check your promoted listings. That's number four. Okay, number five, the last one, and this goes for a lot of us as well. We're using promotions and sales on eBay. There's two things to remember when you're running the promotion and sales. Number one is always run sales on items that are really old or have been sitting. If you've got merchandise that's just been sitting and it's not anything uniquely special, antique, rare, collectible that you're just waiting for the buyer on and you've got normal stuff, probably wanna run a sale because it's either priced too high or you're just in a lot of competition and you're saturated. And yeah, you could lower the price, but 
you'd rather run a sale. So let's say that I have this remote up for $20, right? And I find that they're regularly selling for $16, $17, $18. Well, instead of dropping the price to $16, I'm just gonna run a 10% off sale or 15% off sale. It's gonna drop it two or $3 from 20 to 16 and 17. Always, always check the prices and make sure that you are on point because whatever you checked when you listed it, they change month to month, week to week, day to day. So you definitely, uh, you know, price it when you list it correctly, but always keep up with them as well. I tend to check all the stuff that's been sitting because if stuff's selling on its own, then I really don't need to mess with it. But if it's been sitting, there's probably a good reason why. And those are the items that you want to run a sale on. Newer stuff, if you just listed it today and you put up a shirt for $30 and then you run a 15% off sale and knock it immediately down to 25, it could have sold for $30. You didn't even give it a chance, right? And so that can end up costing you two, three, four dollars per item over the course of a month, dozens of items, you're costing yourself money. And so that's part one of the sales. Part two is always keep up during holidays and specials, also on the eBay main page, not your my eBay, but eBay's main shopping page. If you were just clicking eBay.com as a buyer, eBay runs things like 20% off categories, 10%. Always keep an eye on that because if something is already on sale through eBay, there's really no motivation for you to drop it even more because the buyer is getting a discount during Christmas or Memorial Day or whatever it is. And so those are the items that you want to get up, of course, and list while they're having those sales, but also that you will probably sell without having to discount it and cut yourself short even more. Okay, those are five ways. Um, having the correct store level, not overspending on shipping or materials, uh, making sure that you're priced correctly, high enough, but not too high, always making sure that your promoted listings are on the right percentage and making sure that your sales are done on the correct items at the correct time so you don't cut yourself short on money. This sounds like common sense, it sounds basic, but it literally is something that can cost you hundreds of dollars a month. If you're losing $20 a month because you don't have the right store and promoted listings is costing you 15 or $20 a month and overspending on your shipping supplies is costing you 20 or $30 a month, and running sales when you don't have to and giving away five and 10 bucks an item times 50, $60, you can see how this quickly adds up to 100, 150, $200 a month that you are losing over the course of the year it could be two or $3,000 for certain store levels. So always, always keep this in mind. And this goes for anything across your store or your business. Your expenses should be itemized, tracked, and you should be keeping an eye on it. If you are overspending on pencils or pens, Maybe your cell phone bill is too high and there's an opportunity to go cut the bill with cell phone. This is called trimming the fat and it's not downgrading your business or your lifestyle or even your, um, even your business uh, to a lower level. It just means not spending money on things that you don't have to. And most, I read this somewhere, most Americans, this is Americans, that run a business overspend on expenses $5,000 or more a year. So just keep that in mind, that little fact. Imagine what you could do with five thousand extra dollars if you invested it and even turned it into seven or eight thousand over the year. Over ten years, you're going to make yourself an additional seventy or eighty thousand dollars. Just keep that in mind. Um, we waste a lot of money. I probably am guilty of it. And after I move, I'm going to do a serious audit of my business in January 2021 to try to trim out a couple thousand dollars uh, a month or a year or whatever I can. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Give it a thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any videos to help you get your business in the best shape that it can to make the most money you can. And until next time, I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you then.